everyone. Welcome to my weekly messages. I'm Delayla Starr. For all you YouTube YouTubers, hello out there. I know it's been a while since I've done a video. I don't always do them with the weekly message. So if you want to keep getting the weekly messages, you need to go and subscribe on my website. There's a link there on my YouTube channel, neverincouncil.com. There's no charge, and that way you and I will stay in touch. I decided to do a video today because the topic is something I think many of us are going through right now, and that is the closing of a door and the opening of another one. And these doors are big doors because it's a phase of life, a way of living, work, um, lifestyle change, a uh, big, big phase ending and a new one beginning. Which kind of goes along with this whole new reality coming in, old reality, you know, the whole thing. So anyway, I wanted to share with you the best way I know how, how a door opens and closes by sharing a personal experience. Because I am going through a door closing. And it is, I believe, the neighborhood council will be closing uh, shortly. I don't know when, maybe a couple months, maybe less, but it appears, and I'll, I'll explain why, that the neighborhoods are satisfied. They have done their work and they can now move on. The timelines have changed. Um, a new reality is coming in very, very quickly, and uh, there's signs all around if you know where to look. And I won't go into those signs right now, but the world is going through a big door, a big phase shift and so many of us are as well. So I'm going to recount to you how a door opens and closes by this story and I'm going to give it to you chronologically so it will make sense. Okay, so I'm going to have to preface each sign so that you understand why it's important. First of all, when a, when a door begins to close, the funding, the energy to support that phase dissipates that will show up as money, money dissipating, dwindling finances to where you can barely pay anything. And um, that has been happening for me. The second one is that you might lose a job. Um, I had a second job that was more of an emotional support for me for a long time. It's been 18 months I've been doing it. But it also toward the end became a financial asset as well. I um, walked away from that a couple of weeks ago and for those of you who have been following the week, the written portion, you know what that was. Um, I resigned as membership coordinator for a networking group. And um, I thought that was a random event, like just a lesson I needed to learn, but actually it was the second sign in a series of this door closing. And uh, so the first one was the money dissipating. The second one was walking away from the, the job that was supporting the Never and Council. Toward the end, the money from that membership coordinator position was paying the bills at the Never and Council. So I could keep this website going and keep everything going to help support all of you out there. Now, and, and it supported me too. The third sign was um, losing a roommate. Now, when I took on this house, it was so I could do workshops and have people stay here. And it was just more of a connected energy for the emotional plan workshops. And, you know, as the economy changed, um, people stopped doing so much. They stopped traveling as much. And so I've had to, to keep my tax advantages. I've had to rent out the rooms and... Uh, and keep them rented when I don't have retreat clients. So um, the last two months, I always rent out two rooms all the time. One uh, I, I've had rented for now several months, wonderful lady. And the other one I've had to struggle renting, and it usually doesn't take me long to rent that room once it turns. But everybody who showed up wasn't a good fit. And so this the third sign occurred a week after the after the uh, networking event and the signs will come fairly close together I mean the money thing you won't necessarily notice right away but then when the other signs start to happen they start happening very quickly together then you begin to put it all the pieces together 
All right, so the third sign occurred when she gave me notice. Um, but when she did it was very telling. I was, uh, I had called my mentor, one of my uh, friends who I consider to be a mentor in business. He was in our networking group. I said, I have a great idea for a new networking concept because that's what I was going to go do is start another networking concept because I like doing networking. I like building and running networking groups. And I was going to go run it by him. Well, I met him at the coffee shop, coffee shop last Thursday morning. And went, while I was waiting for him, I got a text from my roommate giving me a 30-day notice. So she, her daughter was getting divorced, ending a phase of her life, and needed help paying for her house. So mom was moving in to help her. Interesting, isn't it? <sighs> so that hit me like a bomb. <laughs> while I'm waiting, there was a smile on my face for my mentor to tell him about a new networking group, which I was hoping would make me even more connected to the Kansas City area because once I started getting out and getting around people again, I'm like, man, this is the best thing for grief is being out and being around people. So, third sign, not fun. The next two signs were better. They were positive because not all signs are bad. That evening I had a session. I had a couple sessions to do because I'm doing my holiday special this uh, during, I do that every year. Um, and one of the clients had a sister who had passed over. Now, a little background, I've always wanted to be a medium on top of being a galactic channel. I always thought that would be so cool because helping people who've had people who have passed over and they're missing them, giving them that connection, that knowing that their loved one is still alive. I mean, there's just no words that can... Uh, well, if you've ever had that happen, you know what I'm talking about. But I never felt I had the ability. But anyway, during that session, um, her sister comes in, gives me two confirmations that are unmistakable that it's her. And then another little, another person comes in, which is that girl's niece. And, uh, and again, the confirmation that was unmistakable to my client. I got off the phone thinking, man, why do I doubt my ability to do this? I mean, I can do this. I've done this before. But every time people come in, deceased, deceased people come into the sessions, um, I always tell people, I'm not a channel, so I don't know if this is, this is accurate or not. But it usually ends up being accurate. So why do I keep doubting it? Okay, so that's the third sign. The fourth sign came that night in which I had a dream about a family, a couple, a young couple who had lost a baby girl. And the girl's name was Rose. The signs that she gave me were, the sign she gave me was pink rosebuds. And I kept wondering what the pink rosebuds were. So I finally said rosebud. Well, that was her nickname. Um, there was a, another sign too, but uh, anyway, I'm not going to go into that. You can read about it in the weekly message, in the written portion. So now you have five signs, right? You have money dissipating. You have losing the family connection. Losing the roommate, all right? So these are saying that, okay, you've lost this Marty family, this, this, this group of, this networking group, which is like a family to me. You've lost that family, um, and you're, you're, you're losing your roommate, and there's no new roommates on the horizon. So there's something about the house, something about work, and not getting, and, and, and what I've got going, not no longer being supported. So my, my avenues for financial support are drying up. Very typical when a door closes. The next sign is, I'm writing here from my list. Um, the following Saturday, this is past Saturday, uh, the sump pump in my basement blew, blew a valve. Uh, it's fairly new. I bought it last April. And so I called the plumber. It had not blown. It was just making really no bad noise. And it sounded like it was. It had been running for 24 hours straight. And it was very hot underneath the lid. So uh, underneath the, the big wooden cover that's carpeted. The hole downstairs, the, it's, it's finished. So there's right around the sump pump in the corner, there's a window with full-length curtains. There's new furniture. There's carpet. There's airy rug. It's all really nice there. So I call the company, which is when our networking group, the plumber comes out, young man, inexperienced with sump pumps. He goes and releases the valve and it spews muddy water all over that area of the basement. It's in the ceiling, on the walls, in the curtains, on the furniture, on the rug. Um, it's just everywhere. 
At the same time, it blows out. The water hits the receptacle right next to where the sump pump is and blows out a whole wall of sockets. So now half of the basement is in the dark. Hmm. Another telling sign. Well, the, the young man leaves me with no lights, and he leaves me with a mess to clean up. And about this time, I'm now you can imagine, I've had six signs, only two positive, and money is gone, right? Financially gone. And now I'm facing an electrical bill and a cleanup. All right. That required a 15-minute session with the bat and the pillows. I'm telling you, I just, whew, I was ready to lose it. So I'm like, okay, I get it. There's something going on. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. What is it? So that afternoon, I called my friend Julie, who I talk to just about every day. She lives in Austin, a place I've always wanted to live. And she is just a wonderful lady. I find out that she's been a medium since she was a child. She never told me this. That's why she was able to connect with my brother, because she's the one who really helped me the most through my brother's death. Um, he would come to her. Who knew? He would come to her and talk to her, and then she would call me. So it, it just I never put two and two together. So three signs of a, of a medium, right? And then one, two, three, four, si uh, four signs, three signs of money going, this isn't where you belong, You're starting to see the picture. Okay. So she says to me during the session, I mean, during our talk, she says, okay, when she finds out about the sump pump blowing, she says, your house is crapped on you. Time to sell it and move. Ah, I got it. That's when the door opened. I, in my mind, I literally saw a red door opening, creaking open. Why did it take me so long to figure that one out? Hmm? Here's why. When a door closes, there's usually, it, it, it will become painful. If we do, if we have beliefs blocking our view, things that we're believing that are stopping us from seeing that we need to let go of something. This, the thing that I had two beliefs. Number one, that I had to stay in Kansas City. Oh, she, uh, oh, I need to back up. That I need to move, did I say I need to move to Austin? I need to move to Austin. I've been in Kansas City for 30 years, two years in LA in the middle of that. This has been my home. My daughter's here. I can't leave here. I have to be here for my daughter. That was a belief. I couldn't leave. But losing the family was a sign that, you know, I have more family in, in Austin than I have here because my daughter has her own life. She, I never see my daughter. I mean, it's rarely I ever see her. I see her maybe once every two months. I talk to her maybe once every couple of weeks. She's busy. She's moving on. She's happy. You know, she's healed. And I can move on and be happy and healed too. And she's okay with me going. She's even said that to me, but I couldn't let go. So that was blocking me. Second was, oh, I got to move on. Yeah, I got to hang on to the house. No, I don't. If this phase of the work is over and the Nibiruans are done and, and they're, they're moving on, then I need to move on. So you begin to see how these signs are working. So the final sign, which was a good one, was I went online that night and I started looking at, at, at places, at houses in, in Texas, in Austin. And the first house that I pulled up had, guess what, rose-colored rose brick. Yeah, amazing. I never thought, I never thought that there was rose-colored colored brick out there, but there is. So there you go, seven signs telling me that the Niverns are moving on. Uh, very soon, probably within 60 days, they are pleased. The timelines are shifting. Their work is done. So this phase of the work is over. And I can now go do what I really wanted to do, which was the mediumship. And I can go live back in Texas, which I always love Texas. And I can be near people who've been, in many ways, more of a family to me than my own family has been. So I get family down there, I have friends down there, a new life begins and the work that I want to do. So where does that leave us? Like I said, this will keep going, but I don't know for how long. I encourage all of you to download whatever you need off the website. The holiday session special is going through December 25th, so you can still get sessions. I'll probably always do sessions but it won't be under this website. So I don't know what I'm going to do with the website yet. I might leave it up. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that 
um, there are certain things I won't be selling anymore. I won't be selling liver cleanses. I won't be selling a lot of the stock that costs so much to support. I'm going to start phasing all that out. So if there's something on there you want, you better get it soon. So anyway, that's it. If you're going through a door, maybe this will help you. Do go read the written portion because I think it has even more information in it. And uh, so I'm reading up with from here. Talk to you next week. Uh, where's my clicker? Bye.